Stuart Ewan, Captains of Consciousness, Advertising and the Social Roots of the Consumer Culture. In Captains of Consciousness, Stuart Ewan dives deep into the social roots of American consumer culture, tracing its origins back to the advent of mass production during the early 20th century. Through the rise of advertising and the transformation of traditional values, Ewan illuminates how mass consumption became an integral part of American life. The book examines the impact of the Industrial Revolution, the evolving dynamics of the family, and the role of media and advertising in shaping modern society. In doing so, the author offers valuable insights into how industrialists use the power of advertising to create a homogenous consumer culture and exert social control over the public. The Transformation of American Consumerism The rise of mass production in 1910 sparked a shift in American consumer culture as manufacturers sought to cultivate a mass market of compulsive buyers. By replacing traditional values like thrift and self-reliance with a desire for an endless stream of commodities, these industrialists employed mass media advertising to transform the American consciousness. The concept of mass production spread to other industries by the 1920s, resulting in a growing number of businessmen speaking of the ways that human instinct could be mobilized to turn consumption into an inner compulsion. This required mass consumption, and the development of a corresponding mass market of compulsive buyers became essential. With over 1,000 vehicles daily being produced by Ford's plant, the time needed to assemble automobile chassis dropped dramatically. This led to an increase in production rates, which required the promotion of consuming goods at a similar rate. Mass media advertising became a primary tool in the re-education of the U.S. consumer. The Birth of Consumer Culture In order to expand their market beyond the upper classes, industries had to create a consumer culture that appealed to low-paid workers, subsistence farmers, and immigrants. This required the advertising industry to develop modern marketing techniques using psychological insights to manufacture a market for commodities. Ultimately, modern advertising was a direct response to the needs of mass industrial capitalism. The Art of Diverting Attention Advertisers in the early 20th century needed to tap into universal instincts to appeal to a mass audience and make their cultural milieu as efficient as production. They achieved this by asking readers to look critically at themselves and their flaws, diverting attention from the features of a product. Ads suggested that personal flaws, such as bad breath or unpolished nails, could be the root of dissatisfaction or failures. This led to the rise of passkeys to the good life, such as Woodbury soap or Colgate dental cream. Advertisers' social management skill in creating a cultural milieu was as efficient as line management skill in the process of goods production. The Birth of Consumer Culture In the 1920s, American industrialists like Edward Feline believed they needed to launch a comprehensive program of social planning to educate consumers to accept mass production and consumption. They sought to absorb various subcultures into one homogeneous culture with consumerism as its distinctive characteristic. This required corporate leaders to quell any anti-capitalist attitudes, redirecting demands for social change into demands for consumer goods. The result was the birth of a new era in American culture and the rise of advertising to the dimensions of a major industry. The Paradox of the Consumer Society the rise of mass production and advertising shaped Americans' experience of work and consumption in the 20th century, but in ways that created a paradox between the ideal of the consumer society and the reality of factory work. Skilled craftspeople gave way to interchangeable cogs on assembly lines, where workers' endurance mattered more than their skills. Advertising and PR messages focused on the end product, deliberately avoiding any reference to factories or the hazards of industrial labor. This allowed sellers to promote consumer products as a cure-all for the problems of modern life caused by the very factories that produced them. The result was a contradiction between the language of citizenship that celebrated the American way of life, and the reality of a culture built on surface fluff and environmental degradation. Despite this cautionary tale, the system of mass production and consumption remains a fixture of American life, pointing to the enduring power of advertising to shape our desires and ideals.
the capitalist vision of advertising. Industrial leaders aimed to eliminate traditional practices, especially among immigrant communities, in order to promote consumerism. Advertising agencies created antidote ads to discredit old-fashioned beliefs and practices, such as home production and non-English speaking. They linked patriotism with consumption in foreign language publications to push their message. The ultimate goal was to elevate the consumer marketplace to the level of an encompassing truth through the eradication of cultural expression. Advertisements subtly denigrated traditional practices while promoting modern products. The Fells Nap the Laundry Detergent ad, for instance, discouraged the traditional practice of boiling clothes, arguing that it was unnecessary when using their product. Evolution of the Family Structure Before the Industrial Revolution, families were largely agrarian societies where everyone contributed to production under the direction of an authoritarian father, producing most of the food and clothing they consumed. However, the Industrial Revolution transformed the nature of work, and families as producers faded away. By the 1930s, two-thirds of the U.S. population's income was spent on manufactured goods, and the father became the breadwinner, providing income for the family to buy consumer goods. The evolving family structure gave rise to hopes of equality, but industry had an alternate vision. The corporation assumed the authoritarian role as work changed from home labor to factory shifts, making the whole traditional family structure symbolic rather than practical. In the late 1960s, the advertising industry began addressing a black audience, offering a vision of bland consumer culture in different shades. The home became the arena of consumption, central to the woman's world, with only a small percentage of advertising directed towards men. The 1920s saw the family in crisis, with rising divorce rates and traditional roles in flux. The Rise of Consumerism in America In the early 20th century, children became a driving force for consumerism, bringing home marketing messages from media and corporate-sponsored school activities. Age was no longer a symbol of accumulated knowledge, but rather a detriment leading to compulsory retirement. Mothers became the home administrator, purchasing goods and services for the family, prompting most advertisements to target women. By the late 1920s, consumerism became the defining feature of American society, with women's commodity purchases fulfilling 80% of a typical family's needs. A prominent business strategist of the time famously said, she is no longer a cook, she is a can opener. The shift from capitalism to socialism. As the American economy plunged into the Great Depression, the dream of corporate social control became impossible. Americans turned to socialist solutions, such as the New Deal. The government increased its functions and became a lifeline for industrial growth by increasing spending on public works. Government spending also turned the defense industry into a new area of economic activity during World War II. As a result, government spending became a mechanism for absorbing surplus capital. The Rise of Mass Consumption In the post-war period, mass consumption became a mainstream lifestyle, thanks to the emergence of television as a new medium for commercial messages. Sitcoms and quiz shows portrayed consumerism as a desirable way of life, while marginalizing non-white and immigrant populations as outsiders. Advertisers painted adults as incompetent and youth as a conduit for consumption, while presenting blonde women as the epitome of beauty. With the civil rights movement, counterculture, and feminism, resistance to consumerism grew. Marketers co-opted the counterculture's criticism of corporations by positioning their products as alternatives to mass-produced goods. By the 1970s, consumerism had become an integral part of American culture, with people accepting the commodity system as the natural way to satisfy their needs. However, skepticism grew about the marketplace's ability to address social and personal issues. As an exhaustive study of consumer culture and advertising, Captains of Consciousness effectively demonstrates how 20th century industrialists successfully manufactured a mass market for their products by transforming the American consciousness. The book delves into the psychological strategies employed by advertisers, the disruption of traditional values and relationships, 
and the rise of mass media advertising as a primary tool for re-educating the American public. Yuan also tackles themes of social control, ethnic assimilation, and the persistence of inequalities within the consumer marketplace. Ultimately, through a critical analysis of the mechanisms and ideologies behind modern consumerism, the book sheds light on the powerful influence of advertising on society and the human psyche.